Welcome back. You have tuned in to Women's AM. This morning, I'm joined by Sister Hannah, Sister Laika, and Sister Mona. Salam alaikum, sisters. Welcome back. Salam. We're talking about one of my favourite topics today. We're talking about the hijab, but the, the, the kind of probably less known side of it when we when we see uh, sisters who are going through struggles or difficulties with it and wanting to take it off. Um, it made me think about when I put the hijab on and how difficult I found that. And I just wondered if any of you had, you know, similar stories about your journey with hijab. Yes, it was, it was difficult. Um, I started wearing the hijab when I was about 22. Okay. So quite late. Yeah. Uh, but I did it by conviction. No one asked me to, or I wasn't brought up religiously. Okay. So I had to do, you know, the whole mental. I think about a year I was thinking about it. Yeah. A year. And then one day I took the courage. And that's, that's what kind when of When one of my sisters push. put it on, she was younger than me. And I thought, you know, if she can really? do it, I can do it. Yeah. I think that's so nice when we encourage yeah. each other. And we were talking in the break, weren't we, about sometimes, you know, people actually approach us and, and uh, who are in a state wanting to wear it and, and ask us for advice. So mm. it has a big impact. So I'm really looking forward to the discussion, inshallah. <laughs> Without further ado, let's get straight to her views, where today we're discussing taking off the hijab. We live in a world full of temptations and pressures to conform to a certain lifestyle in order to seem successful or to feel included in the culture or society we're a part of. Unfortunately, certain pressures and outlooks on the Muslim woman and her dress code has caused and is still causing many of our sisters to consider not wearing the hijab. However, the decision to take off the hijab is not one that should be taken lightly. And today we try to address the issues as to why some of our sisters feel that they no longer want to wear it. What is it that's causing our sisters to turn away from one of Allah's commandments? Of course, this is a live discussion, so please share your experiences of hijab with us. Or maybe you'd like to pose a question to the panel. The number to call is on your screen now, or why not tweet us at Islam Channel, hashtag WAM15. Sister like I'm going to come to you first with this. As I said, it's a topic that you know, I enjoy uh, um, talking about a lot, and I think it's, this is an important aspect of it that, that needs to be addressed. Um, I think many young women, you know, they know about the hijab, they know that it's something that we should wear, but they don't really understand its significance. What, why do you think that is? Um, probably because they don't know the uh, Islamic uh, teachings behind it. Well, I just want to emphasize that it is farad. It says it in the Quran. Um, in uh, Surah al Ahzab, O Prophet, tell your wives and, and your daughters and the women of the believers to draw their cloaks, veils, all over their bodies. That will be better, that they should be known as free, respectable women, so as not to be annoyed. And um, I think that, that kind of emphasizes that it is farad. Yeah. And you've got other verses from Surah Noor, etc., etc. And I think with the hijab, the significance lies in its meaning. In reality, hijab is just a piece of cloth. Yeah. You know? Um, the significance is behind what it means and, you know, because it's a physical declaration that I am Muslim and yeah. you can see, everyone can spot you, yeah. you know, that sometimes... And, and everyone can make yeah. a judgment about you and sometimes Definitely. that's quite scary and uncomfortable, isn't it? Yeah, and it's a physical reminder to yourself that you are Muslim as well. Yeah. Um, I think when you start wearing the hijab for a long period of time, you kind of forget that it's there yeah. until you see yourself in a moment. You're like, oh, right, because you feel like it's a part of you. But yeah. for girls who aren't you know, necessarily wearing it often, they don't really understand the significance behind it. Yeah. I think if you experience the hijab without practicing it, you can't understand its significance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you know? I completely agree. And I think sometimes you hear um, sisters giving advice about, you know, oh, try different hijabs and try this and, you know, talking more about styles. And actually, that's a flawed premise on which to base whether or not you, you wear the hijab because it should come completely from conviction. As you were saying, Absolutely. it was when you were convicted of, of its, mm -hmm. uh, you know, of your obligation. Absolutely. That's when you can do it. And that's the only way that you're going to get, you know, the strength, uh, the, the strength to continue with what it. What many women don't understand is that it's a command from Allah. Yes. And you're doing this for Allah's sake, not for fashion, not for family, not yeah. for anyone else. Mm -hmm. This is very important. And therefore, if you do something for Allah, it, you can sacrifice other pleasures or luxuries. Uh, a woman's pleasure can be to show herself off, uh, dress up and put makeup and, or, you know, just adorn herself. This is our nature. So this is a struggle for us, and, yeah. it, and it's, it's, it can be difficult sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. But if you do it with the right conviction, then you do it regardless yeah, of the difficulties. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I completely agree. I think that this conviction is a really, um, you know, it's a really important part of mm. um, the, the commitment that we take to wearing the hijab, because it is yeah. something that we're going to be doing, inshallah, for the rest of our lives. Mm. But I think sometimes what we do find, um, and obviously as a weaver, I didn't get this, but maybe, you know, some of you can relate to this. Um, we see young girls that are being 
coerced, sometimes maybe yeah. even forced into wearing the hijab. Um, and sometimes this can have something to do with why they want to take it off. They see it as a you know, yeah. declaration of their independence almost. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sister Hannah, have you ever come across anything like this? Um, yeah, no, I've definitely you know, just seen it amongst um, other sisters that I know. I mean, it comes down to, again, I think what Laika was saying about you know, people, when they don't understand the obligation of it, yeah. and it's just then enforced upon them, it, it, it becomes sort of very difficult. And especially in many places where it's enforced, it comes from sort of, as well, a cultural understanding. Yeah. Of not again, you know, the parents don't understand why, you know, they want their daughter to wear it, but they force her to. Yeah. And, and whenever which they should kind of. Yeah, talk exactly. To it's, it's not explained correctly. And always in Islam, when culture, uh, you know, and the deen is mixed, there will inevitably be contradictions. Um, I mean, just another sort of example is of this, which comes into hijab, is that you know a, a girl might be forced by her family to wear hijab, but then when she would, you know, not see, and her family would not see any problem with her free mixing with her cousins or other distant relatives you know Asians especially they have this notion of cousin brother and then it becomes you know but if he's my brother if we're so close if we're like siblings why do I have to wear hijab and that contradiction just adds to more confusion yes and uh, you know we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Baqarah in verse 208 you know enter into Islam completely you know there shouldn't be any kind of cultural baggage that conf where it conflicts yeah. with Islam that we adopt where into you that. What you will from yeah, faith, absolutely. Yeah. And another then just another sort of incorrect reasoning that sometimes people as well try and link in with the Muslim women's dress code is they say, you know, oh you wear the hijab for protection. And you know, especially in this climate today with the media spotlight always on Islam, wearing hijab is not guaranteed to make you any safer. Even, you know, subhanAllah yesterday I heard about a sister who was attacked in uh, just as in the supermarket um, in the car park, you know, and she was visibly Muslim and wearing hijab. So when, again, you know, in this climate, people say, oh, no, no, you need to wear hijab for protection, and that's so blatantly untrue. It can be a it protection just, against sexual harassment, it does. It can uh, be, it I've can seen be. the difference from day and night. But I think, you know, for myself, from wearing it, not wearing it. It can be, definitely. The I wouldn't kind say of attention it's not, I get, but, you know, in Egypt, subhanAllah, yeah, especially during, help, you know, yeah. the revolution, so many people, sure. you know, were sexually abused and Even harassed during those protests. Yeah, exactly, absolutely. you know. I think, I think it comes down to the difference between the the, uh, you know, the reason we wear it and the benefits Absolutely. we get from, yeah, from exactly. wearing it. Yeah. You know, the reason we wear it, the reason that we do anything, mm. you know, why do we pray, why do we fast, why do we read Quran, you know, all these things. It's, it's the same reason. It's a commandment for Allah, yep. from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yep, and there's actually, you know, there's some specific things in Islam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasn't given and Allah hasn't given a reason for and dress code is one of those things. Yeah. So, it, well, where benefits, you know, inshallah, we hope that they appear, it's not always guaranteed. Mm. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. The benefits don't just have to be sexualization and, you know, mm. sort of saving yourself from harassment what about yourself like whenever I see a woman in hijab I just see the nur in her face and I'm just like wow she's so beautiful yeah and I don't know you know you just feel like there's a connection with the you know Muslim woman and also the fact that you feel like you're safe and you're you're yeah. clean and you're pure. I, I think mm. I would slightly agree with you there in terms of the, the protection aspect for me comes from almost a protection from myself, from my own sort of nafs and desires. Mm -hmm. You know, I know when I wear this, it's like I heard it described once as a Muslim woman's uh, business dress. Mm. So we know when we wear this, we behave a certain way, we Absolutely. talk a certain way. And, and this is kind of what keeps me online almost but That's I think there have been lots of women that, that have you know taken the, the, the decision to, to put it on themselves that have done it out of conviction yes. and that have still taken it off so why do some I've, sisters take this step backwards? Uh, I have a family member who did that who wore it um, you know in the beginning of puberty did it for a few years and then eventually took it off slowly so it started with tighter clothes shorter uh, you know shorter uh, tops and then slowly, slowly, it came off. Um, obviously, I was saddened by it because it's it's someone I care about. Yeah. But at the same time, I, I saw the friends she had, and then you realise it's an influence. It's, it's, difficult, it's difficult, I think, difficult. when it's somebody close to you and somebody yeah. that you love going through this. So how did you kind of, how did you deal with that? What well, we still, I still struggle with it sometimes yeah. because the, when I see her, what she wears when she goes out, I, I do struggle with that. But at the same time, it's her her decision yeah what I cannot force her with friends um, yeah there's friends actually like a it. study by uh, the Journal of Consumer Research mm. found that friends often bond by providing one another with moral support to resist the temptation mm. uh, however friends also commonly conspire together to enjoy indulgences That's so it, your friends are going to influence you no matter what mm. you know it's, it's proven by science oh, you, yeah. the people you surround yourself with will influence you in some way or That's another true. either you will influence them in a good way or a positive way or you know vice versa and then even with yeah. Islam we look at the value 
that's put on good company. Yeah. And I think hijab is something that's really, you know, really symptomatic of that. I think a problem amongst young people, um, which I find, is the temptation to fit in and yeah. to integrate into wider society. When you're brought up in a... Um, normal society where people are going to discos at a young age, they're going to prom, you know, sleepovers at, you know, non-Muslim houses, and you feel like you're left out because you're Muslim, and you feel that that's what's stopping you. I think for myself as well, when I was growing up, um, all my friends were non-Muslim, and I was like, oh, I'm not like them, I'm not the same, mm. and it makes you kind of repel away from Islam because... See, I think this is the problem, isn't it? So often people say integration, but what, what they really mean is assimilation, yeah. and, and that's, again, that's, that's two different things. We, there's nothing wrong with integrating, there's nothing wrong with... Uh, you know, kind of working, living next door to, conversing with non-Muslims, people that have a different set of values to us. Yeah. But we have to be clear, you know, we understand this is our purpose of life. We understand this is the, the kind of guidelines we've been given and to, to progress. And we get rewards for it. Every Definitely. day you wear your hijab, you so, get rewards for it. Absolutely. And, and, you know, we've mm. already talked about the, the opportunity for dawah, the opportunity for, um, you know, encouraging um, non-Muslims um, as well in terms of wearing mm. the hijab. Mm. I think when I, um, when I think about my daughter, mm. I, you know, I want her, you know, she's young at the moment, but I want her to love hijab the same way that I've come to love it. Mm. And, you know, sometimes I, I, I do obviously worry about that. Mm. Um, so I think, you know, obviously our, our two young panel members, <laughs> mashallah, how did you, how did you uh, get this from your parents, from probably mothers or older sisters? How did they instill this in you, Do you want to, go to, to love hijab? <laughs> um, I think, alhamdulillah, I was very fortunate in that I was brought up in this manner, as you were yeah. saying, where, you know, it was instilled in me from a very young age, you know, clearly the reason, you know, that we wear this as an act of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without kind of any of the cultural, you know, assumptions that sometimes come with that. And whilst, you know, there's always a training period when you're younger that you go through wearing it on and off, by the time sort of that I, when the time came that I actually had to, I was pretty much wearing it, you know, 24-7, mm. yeah. like when I went outside anyway. Mm. Uh, anyway, so, um, alhamdulillah, I think what really helped with that was definitely, you know, making it a part of the Islamic identity, yeah. you know, that just the way that you pray and you fast and you do all of these other things, this is just like any other aspect from Islam. So whilst you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't pick and choose with any other act of worship, no. this is exactly yeah. the same as that. And it is 100%, you know, just a means of you getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And very much, I feel as well, visualizing, you know, Jannah, I was always, you know, brought up Which a lot Which reminds with. me of, um, of Aisha radiallahu anha when she saw this group of women uh, all, you know, I wonder what that means to her, but she thought they were very beautified mm -hmm. publicly. Um, it could be for us uh, nothing yeah. but for her <laughs> at the time. And she looked at them and said, you enjoy this life, we will enjoy Absolutely, the next life. Yeah, and yeah. this is it. Yeah. You know, we sacrifice this life for the next where we will be beautiful forever. Um, we, we will have no constraints of what yeah. to wear, not to wear. We'll have beautiful dresses and... Yeah. You know, and and it's for eternity. Yeah. And that, that I need to remind myself that all the yeah. time. Yeah. I like this yeah. idea of it's it's about us investing in our relationship with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and this is the way, uh, you, you know, that we mm. build our love for these things. Mm -hmm. You know, through du'a, through um, you know supplications to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to put love and to for help something. You. If yeah. something is difficult, if you find hijab difficult, just ask Allah to help you. I I know I used to ask Allah for many things yeah. to help me you know, stop things that were haram or, yeah. you know, help me yeah. do good things. Yeah, and, and absolutely, like absolutely. I'm sure, you know, mm -hmm. we can all, um, we've all got lots of experiences mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, we do have <laughs> to take a quick break now. This is such an important to dis uh, discussion, but don't go far because when we return, we'll be asking what, how, how do we instill this love for hijab amongst our sisters? Before we go, here is a reminder of this week's competition. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Women's AM. This morning I'm joined by Sister Hannah, Sister Laika and Sister Mona to discuss why sis some sisters feel like they want to take off their hijab and what can we do to overcome this. Don't forget if you have something to share with us on this topic, please do so. You can call the number on your screen now or you can tweet us at Islam Channel, hashtag WAM15. Sister Laika, I'm going to come back to you. Before the break, uh, we were talking a little bit about, um, you know, we, we do see sisters that have uh, put hijab on through conviction, um, but unfortunately then have, have taken it off at a later date. And um, we were looking at some of the reasons why this might happen. Um, so I just wanted to quickly mention um, the fact that some sisters may feel like in order to progress in their career, hijab doesn't fit into the workplace. Yeah. And I've read a lot of articles on this, um, sisters telling about their experiences that in the workplace, 
around surrounded by non-Muslims, they feel like they're outcasted and they feel kind of alienated and yeah. they don't want to be discriminated against yeah. um, just because of their hijab. Yeah. Um, so, for example, a sister who works in the bank, who's a friend of mine, she felt like she was a manager of the bank branch and her clients didn't treat her with respect yeah. that, that she deserved in her position and she felt like maybe I should be taking my hijab off but you know mm. you know I I had a friend as well who who was out of work and she had a lot of interviews coming up and you know she she asked me for my advice and she said I, I feel like I need to take off my hijab to go to these interviews because I'm worried that I'm going to be viewed in a negative manner you know if, if I wear it um, but the thing is we have to kind of put into perspective you know this life is a test isn't it what happens if you go to the interview without hijab and you get the job mm -hmm. what happens next you start the job without hijab exactly. what happens after that you find it difficult to pray at work mm, so it's yeah. not just about the one isolated thing it has a knock-on effect to the whole rest of your day exactly it never stopped me getting jobs in my hijab so Absolutely. if it's written for you it's going to happen it happens it's by the will written. of Allah and exactly. I think this is the key point isn't it mm -hmm. we need to uh, some women feel very Allah. unattractive uh, with hijab some people put off putting hijab because they feel unattractive yeah or they take it off because they feel unattractive uh, you and see this a lot as well I with that looking lot, yeah. for husbands when sisters yes. get to that certain age you know they, again they, it's they're scared if I put a hijab on yeah. maybe I'll, I won't find a husband etc but it, it's so funny there's this story um, a friend of mine she put off the hijab because she thought okay I want to get married I want to get married she didn't get married until her 30s two weeks after putting the hijab on um, she got this um, uh, amazing man to propose wow, to her and she got married and she always tells me you know I put off the hijab because I thought I won't find a husband yeah. mm -hmm. when I put it on then I you know uh, see this is the thing there's two things isn't it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us when you w walk towards him he will run towards you mm -hmm. and and then the other thing you have to think of if you're looking for a husband <laughs> what kind of a husband do you, do you want, want you well. want a husband that's gonna love hijab and love you in hijab and so mm -hmm. we have to think about our, our criteria don't we Absolutely. but I think the, the thing is sometimes living in the West and I think this idea of mm -hmm. beauty it does um, you know it does affect how we think and even how as we... hijab is I mean you can see all these um, fash uh, hijabistas or whatever they call them yeah um, where it's more of a fashion yes of a trend yeah with you know heavy makeups uh, you know tri uh, tight clothes clothing they still call it hijab yeah but in my view um, it's about going back to what are the properties mm, of exactly. hijab and, and you know obviously this has to be fulfilled in order for it to be mm. you know completely it's again hijab. wanting to feel attractive exactly even with your hijab I, I think though this this does contribute to um, you know a lot of sisters wanting to take off their hijab this this ideal of beauty and um, sister Hannah what, what are your kind of comments on yeah. on that no I think you're totally right Liz you know living in the West we are being dictated a very specific dress code whether yeah. you know it, it's funny because people usually would look at Islam and say no you are but equivalently in the West you know there is an obsession with you know the woman how she looks her outer appearance you know there is a beauty myth um, as it is called and uh, feminist Naomi Wolf she recognized this and she said uh, in a quote from her book I think uh, a culture fixated on female thinness is not an obsession about female beauty but an obsession about female obedience and essentially yes. you know what it, it's the companies that make the uh, makeup fashion you know the dieting industry they are profiting from women's insecurities yeah. and it's when this profit you know for capitalist gains when it's placed over the worth and the value yeah. and the ultimate you know the feelings of security that a woman has that's when you know society has taken yeah. you know an extremely wrong turn yeah um, I read another interesting article um, when I was when I heard about this topic um, by a woman called Arwa Mahdi and she was arguing that hair is the Western woman's veil and she was then and she was saying that the time and money women spend on their hair isn't just the free exercise of personal preference but it's part of a broader culture broad, broader cultural performance of what it means to be a woman and it's funny that oh, you know that's interesting. it is yeah. interesting I need to put my face on yeah absolutely yeah, you know you don't go to work if you equally as much on. as <laughs> say you know the West has judged the Muslim woman by her hijab and you know there's huge amounts of debate uh, about that yeah equally the Western woman perhaps who does not wear hijab or who's not Muslim is judged by her hair and what's on her head yeah. rather than what's in it yeah um, and you know as Muslim women we're not exempt from these pressures because we're part of society Absolutely. you know and that's why as well you know from Islam society is so important and we can look at that in terms of the company yeah. that we keep but it definitely is going to have an effect on us and what yeah. we view beauty the ideal to be the so ideal in beauty um, it changes wherever you go whichever country you go there's different um, ideals of beauty you know in China perhaps it's uh, fairer skin rosier cheeks in India it's 
it's a more li a t uh, lighter skin. Yeah. And wherever you go, yeah, it's yeah. different. Yeah. yeah. It's not a constant, is it? Yeah. It's, and it's I feel like if you're going to run after what the beauty ideal is where you live, wherever. If you move country, you're going to be chasing something else. Yeah. And I think a woman is constantly faced with pressure, whether it's from the cosmetic industry, but as you said, um, you know, the fashion industry. And at the end of the day, beauty, we need to remember, is within. It's within yeah. the mind yeah. in Islam. Even though in Islam, you know, there is... Um, value placed on beauty so whenever a uh, woman and man want to get married they must feel attracted to each other it's encouraged so you know the marriage is even that the, the saying that Allah, Allah is beautiful and loves yeah, beauty yeah. but you can do that in the privacy of your home yeah, yeah you can wear whatever you want the realms of, of you can do your hair and your makeup yeah, and your clothes and yeah. but I think you know that there is that there is this this kind of you know beauty side of it but there is here in the UK it, it is easy for us to wear mm. hijab and, yeah. and we have lots of hijabi vloggers and, and web Websites and things yeah. like that that, that we can, uh, you know, th th that should be encouraging us. Doesn't this yeah. make it easier for us? In, in a way, yes, it makes it more accessible or more trendy or it becomes easier because all your friends are wearing yeah. it. But then there are, like I said before, um, these bloggers, or, or they have a responsibility as well because they've got people following mm. them. They've got responsibility to show the real side of hijab, yeah, yeah. not the way they perceive yeah. it, which but is... But then the responsibility is on ourselves, isn't it, as well, mm. to kind of know yeah. what it is. Learn, learn about it ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. It is, definitely, but I think it's, everything's always harder when you've got sort of perhaps people around you not necessarily encouraging you, uh, you know, for the opposite. So say, for example, with many of these hijabi bloggers, or you have, you know, so many fashion shows now, you know, I attended sort of one a while back, um, and I remember the presenter, she started the show off by saying, you know, our hijabs, our buyers, they are fashion. And then she proceeded to say she wasn't um, someone who wore hijab herself, but she was like, I hope, inshallah, it will suit me one day. Now, obviously, her intention is, inshallah, completely sincere. But the way that she was saying it, you know, as though it would suit me one day within a fashion show, you know, hijab is not something that suits us or doesn't suit us. It's something that we do purely for the sake of yeah. Allah. And when it's become, uh, you know, a fashion trend, you know, as you're saying, and it's imitating all of these other markets that we're talking yeah. about that, you know, impose this beauty ideal on is women, the thing, isn't it? it's like not easy. It's said, trends change. So yeah. then if the, if the trend moves away from hijab or away from proper exactly, hijab, then yeah. what happens? What, what's the your relationship hijab. with hijab? Yeah. It, it can stay for the you know for eternity. That's yeah. the, that's the, the good thing about hijab. Exactly, hijab is for it's the same as with now all of as it's in hundred yeah. years. Yeah. Exactly. I think for the hype with social media though it just brings people. It brings awareness that yeah. this is what Muslim women wear. Um, obviously, you said that the way they go about it maybe mm. you know maybe not the right way, but it does bring awareness. You know, we see it everywhere now, and alhamdulillah, more young people are being encouraged to wear yeah. hijab, yeah. and then inshallah they'll be learning about what it means. I, I think the thing is as well, it's important for us you know as a community to not be judgmental you know yes, if we see yeah. a sister not wearing hijab or maybe not yeah. wearing hijab in the, the kind of correct um, oh, God, way you know we, we should make excuses for that sister yeah. and we should be there as a support network not as somebody who she feels intimidated in front of or yeah. that she feels she can't turn to um, I think with that in mind we're nearly at the end of the discussion but I just want to get some you know a few quick tips from you I'll start with you Mona yeah. any sisters that are feeling like they want to take off their hijab what would you say to them I would say um, Think about why you wore it in the first place. Uh, I know this sister who wore it for Allah's sake and then was put off and took it off eventually. So when your iman goes down, the hijab yeah. goes with it as well. Also, I've met people who wear the hijab for a husband, let's say, especially, you know, not especially, but a revert sister I know. And once the husband was not treating her well, she took it off as a exactly. punishment I to him. I think this is the problem we're saying. When you yeah. have a flawed criteria mm. with which you, you wear hijab, then, you mm. know, it's not going to be a constant. Uh, sister Laika, what's your uh, tips for any sisters out there that might be struggling? I wouldn't give the tip to the sister who's struggling. I would say the people who are around her, so that support network that she has there, um, speak to her in a manner which you would want to be speak, uh, yeah. spoken to. So um, have that patience with the sister and always be there. So regardless of if she's wearing it, if she's not wearing it, yeah. if she's in the middle, you always be there constantly yeah. and um, use Islam not to kind of shove it down the sister's throat like you need to do this and yeah. this is what it says in the Quran but use it to you know support your um, yeah. argument kind of thing. And I think the thing is as well sometimes you know we don't know the sister's position with yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they may have a better position with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than we do as a sister in hijab yeah. so you know we should never be judgmental. Yeah, uh, no. Sister Hannah what's your, your tip for any sisters out there that are thinking about taking off hijab? Yeah no absolutely I think coming off of sister Laika's point you know not underestimating the struggle that it is for many sisters you know and the big 
big step that it is for many sisters to start wearing hijab and to view it, you know, within the context. Um, but also, you know, to, for the sisters who want to wear it, you know, we always say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests those he loves. And it's easy to kind of just like palm off that phrase, you know, continually. Yeah. But, you know, Allah genuinely, you know, he does love us and he wants to give us opportunities to endure patiently and by that means come closer Fantastic to Fantastic comment to end on there. Jazakallah hai. We're going to have to, we're gonna have to bring it to an end there, but some fantastic tips there from the panel. Jazakallah hai. We are always told not to judge a person by the way that they look, but unfortunately we do just that. Judgments are then taken to heart because we've not embraced our sisters and been their support work when they needed it the most. We all go through highs and lows of Iman, and the best we can hope for is that when we need it most, we have a strong network of sisters around us. And of course, never lose faith in the mercy and compassion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For Allah loves those who turn to him constantly. O oh, you who have believed, seek help through patience and prayer. Indeed, Allah is with the patience. That's from Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 153. We've had some great insights and advice from our panel this morning, but if you've missed any of today's show, all is not lost, as you can catch up the highlights from all this week on Sunday at 3pm. Or why not catch up on YouTube? Here are the details.